It's the strangest prison on earth, an overcrowded penitentiary in the heart of a South American city where the prisoners run the show. Inside Bolivia's San Pedro prison, there are no guards and a hardcore population of violent and dangerous criminals, many of whom live with their wives and kids. There are drug factories and a brutal code of justice. And there are restaurants, schools, barber shops and, believe it or not, even a booming real estate trade. Fifteen years ago, Australian author Rusty Young went undercover in this complex community to expose the corruption and violence. Now Rusty returns to take Denham Hitchcock inside the jail they can't shut down. This is an incredible city. I mean, it's one of the highest cities in the world. It's 3,600 metres above sea level. It's been 12 years since Rusty Young was in Bolivia. I've got a lot of good memories here. I mean, this is obviously the point. This is the city and the point where my life changed. He's giving us a tour of La Paz, the city that sits in the peaks of the Andes. The funny thing about La Paz is that the wealthy people live down in the bottom of the bowl and the poorer people live in the slums up in the mountains with, with what we would consider to be million dollar views. It's unique for many reasons, but the main one is this, San Pedro Prison. This is really like a city within a city. It's extraordinary. Yeah, we're looking over the rooftop here of San Pedro Prison. Like any jail, cameras are not welcomed. We are shooting from inside a hotel room across the street. And it's really reminiscent of any shanty town in South America. The only difference being, of course, the 15 metre high walls all the way around. But the prison occupies an entire block in the dead centre of La Paz. So yeah. it's quite surreal that a prison would be in the middle of a city. Yeah. It doesn't really seem like a prison at all. Not at all. Um, and during the day, it's, it's quite peaceful. But it's at night time that the prison really becomes a lot more dangerous. Dangerous because the prison is run by the inmates. Prison rules, prison justice. There are no guards inside the, the prison at all. The prisoners have completely free reign inside. They just throw them in there and they beat them and drown them, electrocute them, stab them, and then just kick them until they're dead. The prison itself is awash with drugs. <laughs> Got some of the, the country's best cocaine cooks. Things can turn violent very quickly. My name's Rusty Young, I'm 28 years old, and I was travelling through Bolivia on a backpacking holiday when I heard about San Pedro Prison. Back in 2000, Rusty bribed his way into the prison. I would say the only place in the world where you can find so much humanity and yet so much danger at the same time. So amazed by what he saw, Rusty lived inside San Pedro for four months to write a book. The book, called Marching Powder, was a bestseller, but it exposed the prison and the children, the corruption, the drugs, and he had to flee Bolivia. Rusty has enemies. So we're planning for you to step back inside those walls. I'm a little bit nervous that someone might want to take some kind of revenge, but I'm also excited because I mean, it's been a while since I've been inside there, and it'll be interesting to see how it's changed. If I was in there on my own, I would be very, very scared. We plan to enter San Pedro prison with a pocket-sized camera. Helping us is Martin, who knows the guards at the front gate. I have to go up first, and then I'll come back down. A second camera team will secretly shoot through the hotel window. We have no idea how the prisoners will react to us or to Rusty. His book could have made things better, but they could also be worse. Rusty wants to find out, but he knows once we pass through these gates, the guards can't help us. Sorry. 
It's like being in an apartment complex. In one of the other prisons in Bolivia, that last week there was a massacre. Seven people were killed in one particular incident. So things can be, uh, it seems pretty peaceful during the day, but things can turn very volatile very quickly inside here. It's been more than a decade, but Rusty is spotted within minutes. Hey, James, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? Been a while. I remember. A long yeah. Time. <laughs> How long ago do you think that was? Fifteen years. James Olu was a relatively new inmate when I was there, and at that time he was, you know, well, reasonably well spoken, fit, healthy. He used to go to the gym, and he's a happy, friendly guy. Dinner, this is James. James, nice to meet you. Twelve years later, yeah. he's obviously become addicted to cocaine and he, his speech is incoherent, he looks completely unhealthy and he's, it's just not the same person. News that Rusty is inside the jail is spreading and the inmate's reaction is unpredictable. So Martin guides him into a nearby cell where he can't be seen. In San Pedro, the locks are on the inside. Let's be honest, it's a risk for you to come here. Absolutely, and I'm still a little bit nervous about being seen. You know, everyone knows about the book, and so I'm just worried about how the prisoners will take it, and then if word gets back to the authorities that I'm in here, what they'll do. I mean, there could be repercussions. We'll leave you here okay. and uh, keep going, uh -huh. and uh, we'll come back and get you. Sure. James and Martin then take us on a bizarre tour. The world of San Pedro Prison, the city within a city. One of the most remarkable things about this place is that entire families are living here. If the husband gets sentenced, he comes to prison, the family's on the outside without an income, so the family comes in. This place um, is owned by Eric, and he has a wife and two children here. The children are eight years old and 13 years old. Does Eric worry about having his family in here? So he's very happy to have his family here. So he thinks they're safer in here than they would be outside without him. Not only are entire families here, but if you want a place to call your own, just like in the real world, you have to buy it. And how much does he pay for this place? 8,000. 8,400 US dollars? US dollar. And he owns it? He owns it. OK, so when he leaves, he will sell this place? That's right. That's like a property? Yeah. Like real estate yeah. in a prison? In a prison. <laughs> OK. I can't believe I'm saying this, but there are sections in the prison just like a hotel from one star to five star. <laughs> That's right. There are eight different sections inside the prison. Maybe be careful with the, um, at uh, this one, yeah. Everyone has to buy their own prison cell and they're obviously of varying quality. So depending on how much money you have, that will determine which uh, particular section you go into. So they're almost like small suburbs. And the, the inmates um, have invented a rating system. So you have um, anything from zero stars up to five and a half stars, where the really rich uh, drug traffickers and politicians live. There, there are people who have died of exposure just because they couldn't afford a, a prison cell. Literally died in the corridors. Literally died in the corridors. One of the sad things about this place is that it was built to house 250 people. There are now more than 3,000. If you got money, you're in an apartment, but if you don't, you're on the concrete. In here, it all comes down. It's like a news agent. Order. To one thing. What the question? Dos. Money. Okay. I'm uh, buying food inside the prison. There are shops all the way through here. 
the government does provide uh, watery soup, and but basically often the money goes missing, so the actual quality of the food and the amount of nutrition in the soup is so poor that the inmates decide to feed themselves. If you're in here as a prisoner, you get one meal a day, but if you don't like the prison food, you can go to the restaurants. There's dozens of them. Once prisoners go into the prison, they need to support themselves financially. There are messengers earning one or two bolivianos um, to, in order to call visitors to the gate. There are people shining shoes, there are cooks, there are people doing woodworks. Beautiful. Why not? There's a dentist in there, a doctor in there who'd been in prison for stabbing his wife 52 times. I don't, didn't want to go and get any antibiotic injections from him. Everyone in San Pedro has to have some kind of job. Forget everything you know about prisons. This system, as inconceivable as it is, has been endorsed by the government. The cost may have something to do with it. The inmates look after themselves, so it's cheap to run. One of the things that amazes me the most is the amount of children here. They yeah. are, they're everywhere. Yeah, when, when you get a father and a mother, and quite often they put both of them in jail at the same time, who looks after the kids? Yeah. And they're safer here, much safer here, <laughs> than on the streets on their own, uh, you know, fending for themselves. So it's a big debate. They should really have hostels. So many kids. Is it right that there are children inside a prison? This is, quite simply, an extraordinary place. There are no guards here. This place is run by the inmates. No guards means no protection, and we are on a tour like no other. So is it right that there are children inside a prison? No and yes. <laughs> Dan Moriarty worked in San Pedro as a missionary for five years. He heard their confessions, provided comfort. He knew the inmates better than anyone. The inmates are overwhelmingly from impoverished backgrounds. The kids are seeing nothing in the prison that they don't see in the neighborhoods they came from. Having both the children be near their parents and the parents continue to nurture and care for their children, uh, I think is the best thing for both of them. There is a dark side to it, and particularly in the poorer sections when they take drugs at night time. This is not a place for, for little children. Why do I do drugs in prison? To kill time. How big an issue is cocaine in San Pedro? It's a huge issue for two reasons. It's the reason most people are there, and then it's readily available inside. This is one of the paradoxes of this place. 80% of the people that are in here, they're in here for drug offences. Ah, be careful about uh, who's listening. But even so, this place at times has produced a lot of cocaine from inside the prison. You've got some of the, the country's best um, cocaine cooks living inside there. You've got people who export cocaine, so pretty much all they talk about and all, all, the, all that they know is drug trafficking, so that's one of the main industries inside the prison. How is it that drugs are allowed inside that prison? Look, I mean, there's, there are, let's be honest, there are drugs in every prison around the world, and the guards are usually complicit in allowing them in, but in this case, <clears throat> it's, it's absolutely rampant. You know, in all the sections, you can buy drugs very, very cheaply, cheaper than on the outside. When you have people not sleeping and strung out on uh, cocaine base for three or four days drinking, things can turn violent very quickly. Drugs are in most cases the first problem and the last. Prison guards are at the gate and on the walls, but not on the inside. So the inmates determine the punishment, and it can be severe. It takes place in a small pool called the well. The greatest violence is perpetrated against sex offenders. Uh, rapists and child molesters who are brought in um, are not seg segregated from the main population. For this community to function, the innocent must be protected. 
as a warning. Rapists and pedophiles are beaten on arrival. There is no second chance. A big lynch mob forms. They carry them through the corridors. And there's, uh, in one of the sections, there's um, a sort of a well. And they fill it with water, and they just throw them in there, and they beat them, drown them, electrocute them, stab them, and then just kick them until they're dead. This prison code is uncompromising, but it's not perfect. The children are sometimes in actual physical danger. There have been a number of cases uh, of young girls, one girl who was six who was raped and killed uh, inside the prison when the, when the mother was off partying. And uh, only two years ago, uh, a 12-year-old girl was found to be pregnant. It's a strange sight. While we are there, children return from school, flooding the corridors of the jail. Women and children can come and go as they please. As light begins to fade, we are told our visit has some of the inmates agitated. We need to go? OK. Yep. We're good. We're following you. Both James and Martin insist we need to leave immediately. See, got to go. We're coming up here first. Got to get lost in here. Yeah, I think that's what we're doing. Hello. <laughs> you OK? Yeah, yeah, fine. You get through the main courtyard yet? Yeah. <laughs> this is how it works here. <laughs> Rust is a little worried about. Who's seen him? This is the way out, isn't it? Got no idea. Is this prison something that needs to be shut down? If it were better supervised, I would say that potentially it would be a very progressive prison model. But the way that it's executed at present, it's actually extremely damaging. The dignity that the inmates are allowed by the freedom that they're given and the fact that they have their families with them, that is a model for sure. <laughs>